Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe Klein from Not A Bitter, and I'm talking to Dimitri Hitz. We're close. Uh, yeah, that's close enough. Dimitri uh, has he's you know led a couple of webinars with us and shown some interesting stuff. And the other day I had, had shared some stuff, at least or at least that's why he reached out to me as I had done some stuff with ActiveX. And he was saying, "Hey, I've done some cool stuff." And you, you're also I should mention because you led the webinar on version two in AutoHotKey, and that's also everything you're doing and demonstrating this is done with version two, right? That's correct. Cool. So let's just start. Yeah, and you could said, "Hey, I got some cool examples. Let's uh, let's yeah. take a look at them." So, um, actually, it all started with uh, an example of you, you, Joe, and it was just simple. Uh, this one, right? But, okay, but right. It, it annoyed me a little bit because it was just random flickering right. on the screen, and that's not natural, Joe. It's not natural. <laughs> so I, yeah. I was thinking it should be moving and also to sure. be able to see how fluent it's changing. It's it's uh, easy. It's more interesting to see if it moves, how fluent do, does it moves? And can we make some graphic with it? Can we make it, for example, a game or something like that with it? Oh. Okay. So I actually, uh, I changed it to, to, to circles. And um, I also added some bouncing to it. So if they collide, nice. they don't need to, then they will bounce off each other. And uh, I actually cheated a little bit because this code is copied from uh, another channel on YouTube. It was written in uh, C++. And uh -huh. Actually, if you see the formulas, if you want get it, it's not that easy just to, to program it in. But here, all the circles are actually objects with coordinates. They have a, a, a size. I also added a mass for them because if they collide, then depending on the mass, uh, something different uh, would happen. And uh, you oh. can also see some uh, red circles, and they are infecting the other ones. So it's actually copied from a simulation that I saw on TV uh, regarding uh, Corona. Of course, now it's just if it bounces, it will infect it. But you can make it even more interesting and say, yeah, there is a, a small chance to infect something. And after a while, the red ball will change back to, to black oh. and then you add a right. counter, how many uh, percent is infected and things like that. And you can add extra obstacles, things like that. Um, also, there is some friction. So you can add friction. You see then everything comes uh, to a standstill. And you can uh, actually launch the ball. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you can uh, play around a little bit with it. And uh, it's actually quite interesting. Um, you can even add some gravity points to it. For example, I will now demonstrate. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I will show first a little bit of the code. Um, you just create a GUI and you add some events to if you close it then the program will close okay uh, here i add some buttons to to be able to freeze every element uh, uh to to reload uh, and to set some settings and now we come to the interesting part uh in v2 uh the arrays are a little bit different and uh it's all actually uh a map is an array of uh, the array that we actually use. And um, actually, you have you have three kind of arrays in, in V2. You have objects, and you can give properties to it. That's mm -hmm. quite useful. You have maps. That's actually to say, uh, yeah. Uh, map i use for example here to uh then you um exit 
Here I say the items are a map and I, then I give, um, depending on the index, you get, you define something different. Am I telling it correctly? Yeah. It's like easier to see it than it's easier to understand. Than... Yeah. It, it sounded like it was a, a nested arrays when you said the, the, um, the map has arrays in it. Is that what you, I believe you said? Uh, no, that's not always true. But okay. here I, I use it like that. I say here, an uh, uh, item is a circle. Yes. The, the variable items is the collection of all the, the circles. Okay. And every circle is actually an item, an object. Okay. And that object has uh, different properties. So I gave it an ID, but that's actually not that useful. But I like to give something an ID. <laughs> and a size, a random size. You give it random X and I coordinates. You also give it a mass depending on the size a little bit. Hmm. I also gave it some random uh, velocities in X and I. And the acceleration, you could even add that, but I'm not using it, but it's nice to include it. Mm -hmm. And I also give it a, a color that's also a property. And then here you have a part that actually will uh, make it uh, visible on the screen. It's uh, with the use of uh, HTML. So you're updating the active X in the GUI. Then here I have some code to define that there is one wet object that will infect the other ones. Mm -hmm. And then you have here some loops that will take care of uh, First of all, this actually, uh, um, wait, this actually calculates the new uh, velocities uh, and it takes, takes care of the friction. So it, if you put the friction high, it will slow down. Like on a, a billiard table, if you shoot a ball, then after a while, you will have friction and it will slow down. So you can mm -hmm. even simulate that. Yeah. And then it calculates the new X and I coordinates. It will check if you're colliding with the borders, because if you go out of a border, you will jump at the other side back in or you will okay. deflect. Yeah. Uh, then here is something, if the velocity is very low, I will set it to zero because, yeah, it's not that useful. <laughs> Else you will always have some small velocity some, to something, I, I wouldn't like that. Hmm. And here I actually uh, calculate if, um, if two circles are inside each other. So if that's the case, then we will quickly put them back outside each other. Because it's not natural. Mm -hmm. Let's say. And uh, you will actually just put them the two uh, the same distance uh, of each other. And here is some code that actually will will say, yeah, if the, the color is red and the other color is not red, then make it red. And here you say the same thing, but then for the, uh, not for the collided circle, but the other one. Then uh, here is actually the code to, uh, this is actually quite some interesting code. Uh, it was quite difficult to, to calculate and I first tried to calculate it myself uh, with my knowledge of uh, cosinus and sinus and angles, but uh, <laughs> it's quite complicated code. It's, it's manageable, but the most difficult part is uh, to have the right, uh, sometimes you need to go negative and sometimes positive and it's very easy to mix it up. 
So because of that, I actually copied it from uh, Wikipedia. And um, it's here it calculates, for example, the, the distance between the circles. And then it will actually, um, depending on that, it will also calculate for the X and I direction a factor. And then it will, here you actually, um, you calculate the difference in velocity between the, the, the elements. And then here you have uh, what we actually need, the, the new velocities of the two components. Cool. This is uh, quite a uh, precious code. Uh, Took a while, yeah, gotcha, yeah. It really uh, depends. It shows you how the, the, the two circles need to collide and, uh, and go back. And then, of course, uh, I have a function to draw the object for me, uh, depending on the coordinates. Um, here you, you see that function, it just, it's, it's actually just uh, uh, changing the, the left and the top uh, properties of the image. It's quite... Uh, simple if you you see it like that it's actually right. just uh 300 code 300 lines and you nice. actually have uh, something that looks uh, quite natural and has a uh, already some possibilities yeah that, that's very impressive okay and uh now something interesting now if we, we would Add gravity to it, it's quite easy. Here I add a new object called gravity. Mm -hmm. I give it an X and I coordinate in the middle. Okay. And I also give it a mass because it's actually, you can see it like a, a sun or a black hole that is attracting the the elements and then when calculating the velocity we calculate the distance between uh, the black hole and the, the object here i add some extra line to uh, actually um, prevent that uh, the distance is too small because else it would be catapulted outside of it because mm -hmm. you are actually still working with intervals of time and not life. So that's one small error that we do in our calculations. And else you, you would have the effect that the, the circles would, would go wild. That's to prevent that. Mm -hmm. And then um, here is just uh, you you add actually to the velocity of the x you add uh, the attraction of the the mass so let's uh, see what the result is cool that's very cool but yeah actually, i can see how the bigger uh, items yeah it's such interesting if if you have not too much uh elements so I will reduce it to, to six or something like that. And I also remove the, the color because it's yep. not not that uh... and now you, you will see something interesting happening. I also will first add subtraction. and wait for it till it will start actually because of some yeah errors in the calculations they will add some some energy Noise. to it yeah and yeah. you see now how it starts rotating and it's actually quite funny that it 
it starts to look like a solar system. Yeah, very cool. And of course, with nice. The, the Big Bang happened. Yeah. <laughs> a real, this real is awesome, time. man. It's awesome. And, and you could oh. also add some more gravity points to it and see how it's it played then. It's, it's quite interesting to, for simulations. And actually, after that I uh, made it, it was actually not that big of a step to go uh, the extra dimension. So I just added the, the Z dimension. And then, uh, yeah, I also changed the, the circles to, to suns. Huh? And I also added some hotkeys to be able to, to rotate the view. That's awesome. And uh, it's actually quite a trick. Um, it's quite easy to uh, uh, actually moving in an angle. It's quite difficult to calculate. If you just say, yeah, uh, I am in a certain coordinate and I will go into it. It's quite easy to do because you just add some extra uh, X, I and Z values and then you will get a new coordinate. But to rotate is a little bit more difficult. Oh, yeah, and because the dimension, right? Yeah. I actually cheat. I'm not uh, rotating uh, myself, but I rotate everything else. But it's quite easier to track mm. and, yeah. And actually, um, also the to calculate the positions of the objects, it's the code is, isn't that hard. I can show it. Um, here you have uh, also an object. And uh, here first it will see um, if uh, the coordinate is uh, is uh, actually uh, in our visibility because if it's behind us we will not display it okay yeah and uh, actually screen is actually my position of the the viewer that has a x i z coordinate and also a focal distance that's a distance between actually your screen and your focal point in your eye yeah and um, here I uh, calculate the diff. Here is actually the code to uh, calculate the position of the projected uh, objects on your screen. So for the X, it's just uh, the X coordinate of the object minus the X coordinate of the screen. Yes. And we do that, uh, we multiply it with the, the, uh, the focal distance and we will divide it uh, with the, the difference in the, in the Z direction. And then you actually just have the projection. So it's not really that complicated of a, a go to to calculate wow. and also of course the the size of the objects you also need to recalculate it and that is the projected size so that's just uh, the size of the objects uh, we multiply it with the focal distance and mm -hmm. we divide it with the the yeah, the distance between your eye and the object. So it's quite surprising how easy these formulas are to to create this. Very cool, man. 
what one thing that I encountered and I actually um, here I will disable this and now you will run it again I actually also made a button to fire some uh, balls to uh, and a button to freeze the objects again and then if we uh, We rotate the screen. Oh, almost losing the pause. Now you see something strange happening. Actually, the the pause are not correctly. The the small ball, what is the furthest from us, uh -huh. is in front of the other one. Uh -huh. Why? Because this is a HTML page and the, the first, uh, no, I think the last image that is uh, uh, right. uh, rendered right. will be on top of the other one. Sure, right. So it's logical. Right. Because of that, here is a small code to just uh, uh, swap, the, swap the, the images. It's actually a little bit cheating. It, you re-index them, basically? Yeah, I, I swap the sounds because the one is in front of the other one, so. Right. Yeah. Cool. Also here, uh, we can also add some gravity, I think. Ah, here. Here I even add uh, three gravity points and I will Add some more suns to to start. Here are actually the the gravity points that I created. It's just the x i z coordinates, and then we can see what the, the effect is. <laughs> That's wild, man. Yeah. And then you can rotate the the way you're looking at it, right? Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. Uh, I can freeze it, but if you, if I freeze it, I will say that all the um, the velocities of all the suns are frozen, are zero. But of course, the uh, gravity is still there. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and you can can move in some directions. Oh, what happened there? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I it's think that's... Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm actually, if I'm... I'm now uh, changing my um, my angle. Yeah. But uh, in the formula to change the angle, I will update every uh, uh, coordinate of every object. But I forgot uh, the gravity points. The, so they're actually not updating. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. So what you see happening that I actually move my view and I move all, every sun, I move them, but I forgot to move the uh, gravity points. Right, okay. Of course, you need to, to take care of everything. That, yep. uh, cool. It gives a, a quite a, a cool effect. Uh, yeah, it's quite funny. amazing how, how easy it is to, if you once have the formulas that can calculate uh, velocities and it's just uh, physics, so. Then um, actually um, one problem of uh, auto hotkey that actually not that fast enough to, to render a lot of things. Mm -hmm. eh? And um, all these, this rendering uh, uh, reminded me of something else that I saw on the internet. And it's actually the, the game of life. It's actually um, something that's, wait, uh, magician, 
in uh, 1970 invented it and you you see here a nice demonstration of it and it's actually um uh, depending on the state of each pixel you will try to uh change it with every uh, frame rate and it's actually the the code is quite simple if uh, they will count the neighbors if you have uh three neighbors and the pixel in the middle of is that then the pixel will come alive if you have if the pixel is alive and you have two or three neighbors then um, the pixel will stay alive and else it will go dead so i thought that that would be also a nice uh, example uh, for us to to try and um we will copy some nice shapes that they use. For example, these are uh, spaceships. These should should move. So um, I actually made here. Uh, this is also a HTML page with uh, a lot of uh, images a lot of square pixels and if i click on it then i can draw something so now i will draw uh, the first glider and beneath it i will draw the other one so i think this is the one and if i press here run i uh, will start it running and you, you see it here gliding. And the, the most basic part of this is actually uh, you can simulate a lot of things with, with this simple code. You could even make something that will simulate this movement. So that if you zoom in, then you will see another game of life inside these. Uh, wow. It's, <laughs> it's surrealistic. And you can even go further. <laughs> you can go every dimension deep then. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. What is that? Oh. Okay, and it's just, just a big random. Thing. something random, and you will probably see that it will start evolving. Some pixel pixels will go dead, and I think a normal state is that normally in the end everything will will die because I here have uh, borders and I'm, I'm not calculating uh, further off the borders. So there are two possibilities, or you, you get a white uh, display in the end, or you get some uh, dead pixels, for example, the square is quite dead, or you get a, uh, here it's called an oscillator, something that will move back and forth. And in, when it was, um more complex or when there was more on there you, you you mentioned earlier how auto hockey is just kind of slow or at least drawing with the active x is kind of slow and that's where you could see that right that you could see it kind of updating as it goes across the screen yeah i can increase the the pixels then it's is more visible now i made a make a grid of 100 to 100 And you can even notice it now. Now it's just calculating the. I don't see anything. Page. Yeah, uh, because it's. <laughs> sorry. Generated. Okay. Yeah. And I I lost my button. Wait. A little Let's too big. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's actually something uh, auto hotkey isn't made to 
to make video games or right. to render a lot. Huh? And if you you run it, you you see it flowing to it. And in that sense, for for this application, it would be even more uh, interesting that you could just update the HTML code in one go, and right. then in one go say update. Right. That's yeah. We're literally drawing each of those pixels, right? Versus having it as a picture and it would just update in a in a blink with yeah. everything yeah yeah i'm gonna um i'll get hellbent to look at this and see his thoughts if if with gdi if he could do something like this but you know if it's snappier i'm curious i think with gdi you you can update it in one go mm -hmm. but i'm curious to know what is the fastest right yeah and It'll... even in this code, I actually, um, I'm not updating everything. I'm always checking, is the state changing? Ah, okay. Okay, update then. Yeah, if it did change, then update just the changes. Good. Yeah. But uh, you will see it when uh, there is not a lot on the screen that will change anymore. It will probably will update a little bit faster. Yeah, well, I noticed it um, earlier that that's what actually, and I just mentioned it a little too late, but I was like, oh, that's funny. Now I barely noticed that um, the layering kind of, uh, you know, the um, updating as it slows, hey, as it dies. <laughs> I added some extra things to it. it it's hides a little bit the, the fact that updating is a, is a pickle, but yeah, if you program a little bit smart and... Uh, and now you see uh, some shapes, for example, here, the squares, mm -hmm. uh, they're dead, they are not updated. Right, anymore. they can't change, right, right. Except if something, uh, if something gets next to it. With it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you also see some oscillators, for example, this one, this one. And actually, uh, uh, tomorrow uh, it's Valentine's Day, so let's do something. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> let's see how, it's awesome. how how this will and how update the speed. Well, in in some ways, earlier when you were had a lot of stuff, I was thinking it might be a fun animation to have it start off like this, but then it turns into a capture that actually you know directs you somewhere, right? Um, yeah. Some of them kind of look like it. Yeah. Here you see that it actually doesn't end very well; they're separated. <laughs> yeah, right. Then, yeah. Oh, it's a broken heart now. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool, though, man. It would be indeed quite funny if you could make a shape with it, but I'm not sure if, if that's so easy to, or you, you should actually, um, you, you should actually, then you actually want to invert the process first. Try if, if you can start with a shape and then try I did it right work, work backwards, but right. I'm not sure if, if it's, that's so easy to do sure. yep. because you will get a lot of possibilities where the the pixels could be alive. So it's hard to predict. I'm not sure if it's possible. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure yeah, anything's possible, but it would be a lot of work, right? I mean, it. it um, this is why true animation <laughs> tools, you know, cost, the, the, the real ones cost you know, a lot of money, but anyway. Yeah. Very cool, man. Was that it? Was that the list yeah, of your... that's cool. actually it. I I can make. Uh, I'll send you the the script so you can. Oh, make thank it you. Available. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's quite interesting, and certainly the the bouncing of the balls. It's 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 yeah, amazing how. how that's easy very cool. It is yeah. Once you have the the formulas, uh, except for the 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 space. Um, 
at the impression that something goes wrong when when two suns right. bounce to each other that in some cases uh, they will get catapulted out of it so uh it has some drugs but uh, the overall uh, effects are quite suddenly also if you start uh, to see the the balls circling around each other uh, it's really like a, a solar system uh, i like the effect uh, cool it's nice and, to uh, play around that's awesome. And so I'm going to give you some homework for next week. I want you to make one to do the fourth dimension. <laughs> Actually, I made it already. <laughs> Actually, Joe, this is the fourth dimension. Time is uh, the fourth dimension. Oh, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> And also, you could also say mass. Yeah. There's also a dimension. Well, so it's... I was, I was really glad we actually stepped through the code because earlier, quite a bit earlier, you mentioned mass, and in my head, mass was size. And then when I was looking in your code, those were two different things, right? And you said the mass is influenced. You no, know, it's 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 correlated with the size, uh, but but it helped me go. Oh, okay. Those are those aren't the same thing. I know sometimes you have uh, kind, uh, uh, gas kinds and they're Giants, quite yeah, yeah. light, and you have black holes, they're quite small, right. but a lot of mass, so right. it can be different. Also, here I, I use every time the same picture, would, but we could also change that. Uh, but mm -hmm. this was just for, yeah, to, to have a simulation, so that does that actually doesn't matter for me what the what the, the picture itself is uh, right yeah but i'm not sure but honestly well i was gonna say having a you know the the yellow with some red in it 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 really you know if they were just solid yellow like in one color it it wouldn't be nearly as fun to look at yeah that's true this is actually just a picture of the sun that i found on the internet okay. <laughs> man thank you so much for sharing this was really interesting and great to see that again it's not like you said it's not there were some complex things you you ran into but overall the vast majority wasn't right it was just thinking it through and adapting yeah that's true yeah and then just just for um food for thought for people watching also is you know you built this for something at least to start with you that you're playing with you could easily add, you know, you were enabling and disabling certain things, right? Well, you could add to your GUI just buttons to do go do those things, right? It was just, hey, I'm doing it. I'm just going to change the code instead of update, you know, have the GUI do that, right? Yeah, for example, adding gravity points or uh, disabling the gravity or right. freezing. I have a button here to freeze everything, eh? but now the gravity is still on. Eh? uh you could you can grab them and and add some velocity in it of course uh, in this version it's not working uh, because yeah we have three dimensions so how would you do it eh? <laughs> also right. uh, uh, the, the the moving of 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 the points is also quite amazing i find it's it's not that easy to to make uh, and it it gives you a real 3d effect if you can move a little bit mm -hmm. now everything yeah. dies let's fire some extra suns to it <laughs> That is just really cool. my my gravity point isn't uh, updating correctly, of course. Huh. Still, it's that's really neat. Yeah, yeah, I like the effect. It's amazing what you can do. Yeah. I, well, awesome, I think I, I once made a, a simulation of our solar system with the correct sizes. Really it's, cool. Yeah, but I think it's long. Mm. Uh, a little bit uh, it was uh, still with version one that I made it mm -hmm. and actually um, 
If you display it, it's not that impressive because all the sizes of the planets are too small to to see in, in relation of the whole solar system. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. One other question I have for you. I know part of you were you're using version two just because you're wanting to to do more in version two. How much do you, if you were to guess, like the complexities of building this with version two, if you were trying to do it in version one, because like version one doesn't have that map kind of thing, how much yeah. more complex would it be in version one? It's not that more complex. Okay, it's, thank you. No. It's no. just, you had it there, so you're trying to use it and it's, you know, it helped, but it's not, it doesn't, it's not night and day. But I must say, I find uh, the... There are some large advantages to version two. Uh, the GUIs is more yeah. object oriented, so right. that gives you uh, a whole new dimension. Also, that you can add functions inside functions that also only work inside the function. It's it's quite interesting. Um, and also uh, the fact that it doesn't allow you to use variables that aren't uh, defined before. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's actually, uh, I was then... updating uh, a script <laughs> on my work. And then when I was updating it, I noticed the errors. So that meant that there were some errors in my code because it wasn't logical. And in I that see. sense, it's quite good that you get the error because something is wrong with your scripts. In general, my scripts work, but you start coding and trying to add some things. And then at one time, everything works. And you say, I'm, I, I do not understand anything of it, but it works. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Uh. It's the same here. Um, here you, you're trying to calculate the, the, the velocities and how they collide with each other and you, you start to, to, to try formulas and uh, you're quite happy if it works and yeah. I do have a question with you on that because it, it, it's what I stay away from GUIs and this kind of stuff just just because of like you said that stuff it, it seems complex. However, as like eating an elephant, right? You don't try to eat the elephant all in one bite, right? You break it down into smaller and smaller things. What I'm curious is, like in your examples of uh, something like to do with movement, right? Did you still, when you're working on something very specific like that, do you keep that within this script and you test it? Or do you compartmentalize it, break it out on its own? and look at the numbers and just see if the numbers are making sense to you first and then apply it back to the GUI, you know, representation. Um, actually, um, you have formulas in physics, you have velocity and acceleration, sure. you have coordinates. So I actually take a, a, a ter theoretical approach of it. And of course, sometimes you need to play a little bit with the, with the scale of it. Mm -hmm. But that's just, uh, you, you, you try to, to see what works a little bit. Huh? How much mass do you need to add? And yeah, that's trial are you, and error. When you yeah. do that, are, so are you, do you, do you look at the actual numbers or do you do both? You look at the numbers, you have those displayed, but you also, literally put them in this and see what they do yeah of course you you try to make an estimation and most of the times my estimation is quite accurate uh, to, okay. to to have a nice effect of, of what i what i want yeah and of course in in this case it's quite important how, how uh, you have actually two worlds you have one world with your real coordinates and you have one view with the projected on the screen. And you need actually uh, uh, two functions or several functions to translate those uh, coordinates. If you click somewhere, what does that mean in the other world? Okay. And if you make a movement, 
uh, in one world, how does that will reflect uh, on the projected screen? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Oof, man. I, I, it's kind of ironic because, you know, for 20 years I was a data scientist, but I suck at math, right? And all that stuff and dealing with formulas, I'm like, you know, I just, yeah. Not my cup of tea, <laughs> but very cool. Yeah, but uh, in a lot of cases, it's quite useful when you're coding to have some background in maths. Actually, I, uh, I, uh, you made also a video, um, uh, a few uh, weeks ago about uh, a mouse menu. Mouse menu? What do you say? Yeah, a, a pie menu for the mouse. With a, a circle. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Come. Sorry. Yeah, I remember now. But yeah, that was uh, um, Tom was doing the radio um, menu, right? I actually have a own version of mine. It's not that fancy of uh, of the other one in the in the on the forum, but uh, mine is actually uh, focused on just uh, having something that is easy. To use and that I can use in every script of mine uh, and it's quite easy to configure and it has a lot of functionalities that I love uh, if you press another hotkey then it, it will change the, the the icons to a different functionality oh, cool. yeah so that's something easy and uh, if you move outside the the circle it will activate that action mm -hmm. that's also something that i liked and also um, if you uh, release it if you're here actually i'm now pressing my middle mouse button down it's already displays it and if i move my mouse and then release it uh, of course when i want to demonstrate it it's not working it's not recording this right you never will yeah. <laughs> yeah but normally if i release it then uh, it, it activates can it. also activate the action yeah. but cool. my intention you just need to click one time and do a movement and then you also already have the action uh, to okay. have it uh, most efficient and i actually just made a, a class of it so this is just the code that you need to define the the venue and then you will get a result a string result and then that one you can use to uh do an action cool yeah but in, and back to why you brought that up with the math of understanding where you are and in areas and stuff yeah yeah, and in this sense, uh, I needed to calculate how this uh, pie menu is, is shaped. And it's actually done with the GDIP. And I'm quite happy that uh, it's also now available for uh, version two of AutoHotKey. Oh, so it is. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I know that was one thing some people complained, um, even because for when I was first using it, there was no 64 bit version of the GDI. And then finally, at some point, I think that got created. But I, yeah, I didn't know that they have it for version two now, too. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, it's, 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 I was quite happy because that, that, that was something that I was missing to and preventing me to, to go all the way to, right. to version two. Yeah, it is a very popular library. Um, and, and for good reason, right? It's, it's amazing how functional and how, how much stuff is in there that stuff and it's simple and it's lightweight and fast yeah yeah sure. well <clears throat> excuse me awesome this is awesome really cool stuff man thank you for sharing all the stuff okay so and uh, I, uh keep yeah keep me in the loop with other stuff you're doing i love seeing what people are doing you know with uh with auto hotkey and especially with graphic stuff it's just it's 
it's easier to for people to grasp and see what you're doing, right? It's so much simpler. So and to understand and to review, you know what I mean? The code itself isn't simpler. It's just it reminds me when I used to paint houses, I could step back and people could look at the house and go, wow, it looks amazing, right? When I do some regression analysis, no one has any idea what in the world I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yes. It's awesome. made, yeah, it's, it's literally, it makes it more visual. So it's very easy to, to see the effect. And in this case, I have a script of two, 300 lines and uh, it already displays uh, this nice effect of uh, you really get the idea that you're in a 3d world uh, right Very and cool. it's so easy to add extra objects it's uh -huh. it doesn't matter how many do you want to project yeah which is it's got to be one of the i the uh i'm trying to think of the right you know like a a slogan or goal of programming is to make it where you can scale it easily right and it's not complex yeah that's cool Awesome, Dimitri. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Have a nice afternoon. You too. Well, have a good evening. Yeah. Bye. Thanks.